So first of all, I'm sorry, but my German is really bad, so I will do everything in English. But I, I hope that um, I will do something in German for the next Gulag Programming Act. Okay, <laughs> let's see. Anyway, welcome. Uh, first of all, I want to ask some questions to you. How many of you know what a Fourier transform? Lift your hand. What's the Fourier transform? You know, okay. How many of you <coughs> know what a wavelet is? Mm, okay. How many of you know how how to calculate the coefficients of the Debussy wavelets? Nobody. Okay, very well. Because <laughs> I, I, I never found anybody who does. And this is the Bible of wavelets, and this guy doesn't know. Apparently, just that. Mrs. Dabushi knows how to calculate that in her wavelengths, but okay. Very well. So let's get started. Okay, this is a very quick overview. Basically, what what the hell are wavelets? How they are implemented? And this is just some pictures, so nothing really important. So what is a wavelet? That is a wavelet. <laughs> It's the Debussy for wavelet. Uh, actually, it's 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 two functions: the scaling functions function and the actual wavelet function. Um, yeah, they look strange, but yeah. So, and this is how they are defined. Uh, basically. Um, all wavelet functions, by definition, have compact support. That means that, except for an interval in which they are allowed to be non-zero, outside the interval they must be zero. This is important. Um, so they are well defined in, if we can say, in, in, the, uh, in the time. I mean, they, they, they have some value in, in a given moment of time, and then they are zero. Mm. So the scaling function is the solution of this equation, and the wavelet is the solution of this equation, where those two are um, coefficients. These are, this is a group of coefficients, okay? There, are, uh, there can be n different coefficients for the scaling and another set of coefficients for, uh, coefficients for, for the um, wavelet function. Uh, the coefficients themselves basically define the wavelet and the scaling function. Uh, I will not explain too much, uh, unless somebody is really interested in this. Uh, well, you can, of course, you can ask any time uh, on what exactly all this means. But basically, uh, this is like a filter. <laughs> um, Yes. Is the phi function on the right hand side? Sorry? The phi mm -hmm. is the phi on the right hand side? Yes. Yes, uh, this is correct. Yeah, that's one. This is correct. Is that that one? Yeah. Yes, th th this is the way they, it, it, it is defined. So, the, this is, the phi is, defi is defined as the solution of this equation. And the C is defined as the solution of this equation with, with the scaling function inside. Okay, and the, and the scaling function is self referential Yes. Yes. And some f for some wavelengths, we, we can know the, the closet form uh, for frequency, the, 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 the actual shape of the function. And for other um, for other functions, we for other wavelets like these ones, for example, Debussy, we only know the coefficients used uh, for the filter. So basically, we only know the, this h zero and uh, the, the various h zeros and h one uh, coefficients. Uh, so what what are but, I mean, how do we use these wavelets? The point is that there's, some, there's, there's this thing called wavelet transform, which is 
really like the Fourier transform. What, 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 what's the point of a Fourier transform? Basically, with the Fourier transform, we are, we are um, projecting the function on a series, on a various uh, exponential, basically sine and cosine, right? Uh, so we, we are performing a change of basis from the time, doma time domain to the uh, frequency domain. That's, that was the Fourier transform does. Uh, so basically we are, the, I mean, I mean doing that with um, the sine and cosine, and which uh, have a very uh, definite frequency value. Of course, it's <laughs> the value, uh, uh, it's their frequency. But they don't have any, um, they, they don't give you any indication of where those frequencies are happen, happening in, in your input signal. Because they're the same, infinite from from left to right, basically. Uh, so instead of doing that, you just uh, calculate the correlation between your input signal and the, um, the wavelet and the scaling functions. So what's what basically, you, you, you may ask, what's the advantage of uh, doing it with the wavelets? The point is that um, with a Fourier transform, you you don't take you don't get any um, indication of where frequencies are happening in, in your input signal. What can be done is to do a windowed Fourier transform. So you you do a Fourier transform on subsequent subsequent windows of, of the signal, so you get some idea of where things are happening because you know that the frequent that, that particular frequency, for example, is, is going on in that window and not, not in the next one. But still, you, you, you don't get the best you can get. Um, the wavelets allow, allow us to, to reach this, um, this limit more closely. We cannot, of course, we cannot break it because it's impossible, but we can get closer to that than what we can do with the standard um, Fourier transform. Yeah, any questions so far? Okay. So, basically, projecting the function onto the wavelets is exactly the same as applying a couple of filters, a high pass mm -hmm. and a low pass filter. And the coefficient the coefficients of the filter are exactly this H0 and H1 that were uh, expressed uh, in, in the formula before. Yeah, the, here. Those are exactly the coefficients of the filters. And the interesting thing is that after you filter this input signal, you can downsample it. You can uh, discard uh, half of the um, samples, so you, in the end, you g we we get the same number of samples we had in the input. So, basically, we we have as an output the same number of uh, elements we had in input. So this is a transform because we are just changing the basis, okay, 
and not uh, just filtering, because any, otherwise <laughs> any filter would be uh, would be good, but no. Um, so basically, one one thing that defines a wavelet is basically if it is possible to have a couple of high pass and low pass filters, if you filter the signal with the high pass and low pass, and then discard half of the um, uh, samples, basically if it is possible to perfectly mm. reconstruct the original signal, then that's a wavelet. So, oh, typo, yeah. Well, so how do, how do we reconstruct the original signal Basically, it's 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 crazy. It's 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 so so simple. I, but the 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 things behind it are, are apparently so complicated. Basically, you just take the the signal upsampling and filtering again with the same coefficients, and then add. Uh, In case of orthogonal wavelets, the, those filters are actually the same. Otherwise, they are not the same, but they, they can be um, calculated from the actual um, uh, f uh, coefficients. Okay, so it's it's not it's not black magic. Well, looks like, but it's not. Um, and for or orthogonal wavelets like the Debussy wavelets, um, they're actually the same uh, the same uh, values. Um, uh, why I say orthogonal? It's because um, the uh, orthogonal wave more typos. Yeah. Well, um, the orthogonal wavelets uh, are actually a basis of the space that we are trying to represent. So it's the mi minimal set of um, functions that can represent the whole thing. Uh, I say this because it is possible to have non-orthogonal wavelets. That is, uh, wavelets that are not, um, I mean, functions that are not linearly independent, but still allowing uh, perfect reconstruction. And that's, that's, um, that's interesting. So, okay, one, one common thing that can be done in implementation, for example, and that's something, for example, that I did for when I implemented something with wavelets, is to um, filter with the low pass and the high pass and then take the high pass, or the low pass in this case, and, and filter again, and, and again, doing several steps. This, this, this is quite useful in sound processing, for example, this is kind of, Kind of obvious in this case. Um, more typos. Well, um, because usually signals, you know, are some parts are interesting and some parts are not really interesting. Anyway, uh, so since since basically we are just filtering. And, we're, and, and even in this case, we are fil filtering a finite number of times. It is easy to see that the fast wavelet transform is actually linear, linear complexity, which is better than the Fourier transform, which is <laughs> n log n, as, uh, as we know. So let's see, for example, in change of base metrics for the Mm, f f for a simple wavelet. So I'm using, oh, hmm, I forgot to put a picture here. Uh, well, I'm using this wavelet, also called um, hard wavelet. Basically, this is the scaling function, this is the wavelet function, okay? So this is a scaling function, this is the wavelet function. Um, combining the, 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 two, the, the two matrices and subsampling immediately, we, have, we still have a square matrix. And so combining, again, 
the in the four by four cases, the low pass with the high pass and some subsampling immediately, we obtain this. And if we combine the previous two by two with this four by four, we obtain this. And what we obtain, we obtain this big thing here, this, which is the wavelet function again, stretched, and this, uh, not stretched, but translated. And if we repeat, we obtain exactly the same thing. We have the big scaling function here, the big wavelet function, the wavelet function stretched and translated, and the wavelet function not uh, stretched but translated. And this is basically this is the, the this, this is really cool. Um, so, yes. What do the number represent in the matrix? Uh, this, this is. Are they the co coefficients? Yeah, coefficient for a change of basis. To 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 transform an input vector from the um, time domain basically to this mixed. Uh, Time, time space wavelet domain. So these are just coefficients, and in particular, these, these are exactly the coefficients of the filter. Oh. This is the, exactly a filter, basically. This is nothing more than, than, than um, a filter. The interesting thing is that in the big picture, you get this thing here. And if you put a vector here, then um, and you do the calculations, you get the, the wavelet transform of that particular input vector. You can just repeat with a <laughs> bigger vector, and you you get the the thing for the um, for the whole signal. Okay, so. Any questions so far, by the way? Because I, I, I tend to run too much, actually. I'm sorry for this. <laughs> but, yeah. Is half function is only a special example, or is it a, has it special? It's the easiest function. Easy. Okay. <laughs> because it's just uh, one, one, one minus one. Okay. And it's also the first wavelet that, that was discovered before they got the name, uh, actually. Yes, it's uh, actually what what does it mean this this thing here? Basically, it's this is the mean average and this is the difference. So if you take a signal and you take the the, the average of a, every two values and then you take the difference, uh, and then then you can throw away half of your in, of your output samples and still be able to perfectly reconstruct. And this this is also the the first uh, of the Debussy wavelets. It's, it's the double sheet to wavelet. Uh, so, m more questions? S I'm sorry for, for running <laughs> this much, but. Okay. Yeah? Um, so, applying uh, this transform to a vector, the result is again a vector, right? Yes. If you, uh, if you apply this to a vector, you'll obtain a vector, which is the representation in the mm, wavelet space of the input vector. Just like if you if you mm, transform uh, uh, a vector with a matrix for the Fourier transform, you obtain the Fourier transform of the vector, yeah. and here you obtain the wavelet transform of a uh, of your input vector. So the implementation is actually incredibly stupid because you need to do a convolution which you can find in math libraries, or you can implement from scratch. I mean, this is, this is my implementation from a project I did in the university some years ago. <laughs> it's just that. This is the, 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 the fast wavelet transform, and this is the reverse transform, which is more complicated just because uh, this is not just a simple transform, but this is uh, a dyadic transform like this one. So it costs 
uh, it's recursive. That's why it's complicated. Actually, it, it could be just this, this part here <laughs> for, for, for the simple uh, transform. It's, it's just a convolution, basically. That's the, that's the point of, of, the, um, of the transform. So this is uh, the, the very basic stuff about this, this wavelet, this, this crazy, crazy wavelet stuff. Um, any, any questions so far before I start? How did these two formulas come up? Who came up with it? Uh, hmm. I, honestly, I don't know. I, I could look it up, but um, perhaps the Mrs. Uh, or doctor, I, I presume, W. She, who invented all the crazy orthogonal wavelets, nobody knows, nobody really knows how to calculate the coefficients. Yes? I, I don't know if you will get to that, but could you talk a bit more about the application of the wavelet? Because uh, you said filter, but filter is not really an application of the wavelet. Oh, sorry. Okay. So, filtering, what did you, okay. Filtering, basically, it's, it's just the, the one way to implement, to implement the, the wavelet transform. Uh, filtering and then discarding the, uh, the half of the values. And reconstructing because you want to reconstruct the original signal from the, the, the transformed values. Uh, so basically, reconstructing means uh, doing the reverse transform. Yes, but uh, give, me, give me an application. Uh, sound processing, sound compression. S sound compression or video compression. You can use uh, wavelets the same way you can use the Fourier transform. There are several codecs which use the wavelet transform. For example, the JPEG 2000 standard uses wavelets for, um, for compression. And you, you can see that the picture compressed with the wavelet transform is, is not as blocky and there are less uh, artifacts on the border or, you know, all that stuff that's typi typical of the um, uh, Fourier transform. Yes? Uh, does it seem right that every wavelet's part of the Fourier transform is the same as the Fourier Well, it's, it's, well, this is a way to implement, to, to implement it. Not, not really efficient to implement the matrix multiplication to perform a filtering, but, uh, this, this was just to show that uh, it's just a change of metric, uh, ch change of change of basis. Okay, that w we are changing the basis, but it's the same data that we are um, handling. Uh, actually, a wavelet is a couple of functions. It's this, this is a, a wavelet. Okay, the point is that sometimes you know the function. Sometimes you only know the coefficient of the filters, which are these two here, which you also put here, in, in then, or or here to do the convolution, basically. And the the way I, f for example, the way I got this picture was to <laughs> simply to to take the uh, an impulse and to transform it several times using the the, the coefficient. If, uh, there's no way to, to actually mm, find uh, the, the formula of this function. But for, for other functions, it, the, 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 you have the formula, okay? If if you don't have the, um, the, the the definition of the function, you can still have the the coefficients with with which you can implement the filters, and that's exactly what happens with the double sheet wavelets, for example. Uh, only because <laughs> uh, it, it, 
basically, the only, apparently the only way to, to find the coefficients is to Google them <laughs> or to ask her directly. I, I tried, even, even on the Bible here, it doesn't really explain how to calculate the coefficients. It says something about that, but then it's not clear. There are some missing um, steps. Uh, in, 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 there's a whole, whole chapter, uh, a whole section dedicated to, 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 to how to calculate the coefficients of the Debussy wavelets. And and uh, and it's incomplete. There's some miss missing step in the middle. So, okay. <laughs> Sorry? No, no. Because she, she know. I hope she knows how to calculate her well. Now this is by uh, Stefan Malat. And actually, it's 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 really nice. I th I and if you need some some introduction to the wavelets, I really suggest you to buy this because it's um, it's really it's really nice. Well buy buy or buy whatever <laughs> whatever it works. Uh, um, yes. Uh, more questions? Don't be afraid. Okay. So Okay, I've been running too much. Um, well, but I can show you some of the wavelets, for example. This is the hard wavelet, this is the Debussy 4, this is the Debussy 6 and 8 and 10. If you see, they, they get smoother when they gr go up with the uh, number of coefficients. Th this has 12 coefficients, 14, and this is this has 16 coefficients. It's a quite a big filter. Hmm? Do you know the, the filter, the coefficients for, for example, using the GPX 2000 uh, standard? Is it a very complex? I, I, I don't know what the JPEG 2000 uses. I didn't, uh, mm, I didn't do any research on that, uh, on that size, but uh, I, I, if I remember correctly, the JPEG 2000 uses non-orthogonal mm -hmm. wavelets. Yeah, and that really looks like black magic because y you, y you are projecting the function on some other vectors which are not linearly independent, but then you can reconstruct. <laughs> and actually that's useful, I think, in lossy compression because you, you, you get some redundance so, somehow. Uh, also, there's no codec. It's a video codec, and it also uses um, non-orthogonal wavelets. Okay, for example, if I take a picture of the Debussy 4, and I Okay, I have to get the frequencies, I get it. For example, by the easiest car function, I think. Also yeah. Frequency. But reconstructing is... Um, it's basically, it's not, it's not for... I mean, the idea of the wavelets is to um, decompose in a mixed uh, d uh, time-space domain. I, while with the... Wavelet, uh, why with the Fourier transform you only decompose on the uh, frequency domain? That is, you can get the frequency, but you don't get the time. With the uh, wavelet, you get some hint, some better hint of, of, of when it happened. Okay. So I transform it, I know about the frequencies, I can frequencies I, don't, I can't hear? Yes, so you, you, can, for, you, you could do that, for example. But, um, but then, space, then no. it's, it depends on what you, you need to do. For example, the fact that there are no um, actual, actually used um, audio codecs that use wavelets should be some kind of hint that perhaps they're not really the best thing out there <laughs> uh, for, for doing that. Um, I myself, I, tr I try to implement a lossless audio codec uh, using wavelets, and oh, it doesn't work. I mean, yes, lossless, yes, but it, does, it doesn't compress that much. 
No, it compresses something, but better, even better than the generic compressors. I mean, with the GZIP, for example, or BZIP, uh, uh, I, I get better compression, compression ratios, but nowhere near flak. <laughs> and by nowhere, I mean like 20%, 30% worse. <laughs> Still 20% better than the generic compressors, but yeah. But that, that, that's uh, actually different. I mean, uh, lossless compression is not done with a Fourier transform anyway. But yeah. Lossless compression. compression, yes. But still nobody's using it. I don't know, maybe, maybe we could start. <laughs> yeah. Mm, any more questions? No. Uh, could we get typical application of these wavelengths, except generic compression? Well, could be used. Of, okay. Or, or also filtering in some cases could help. If you want to filter something at some point and not. Always, for example, it's easier that way. Or, well, you could do weird stuff, but yeah, okay. with the it's not a faster type of Fourier transformation. It's not a Fourier transformation. And how do you choose the wavelength for this application? Uh, <laughs> good luck with that. Uh, you, <laughs> you have to. Um, Basically, yeah, good luck. Uh, you have to, 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 to try and see what's the best thing. Uh, there's no, no, no way to just know that that kind of wavelet is better, is better suited for something compared to something else. Uh, the only thing that I saw is that mm, most lossy codecs uh, use non-orthogonal wavelets. So probably if you're trying to do something lossy, probably you, you, you should be uh, trying to do something with uh, non-orthogonal wavelets. I mean, how do you choose between the wavelets? You have different types of wavelets? Yeah. You and how do you choose which one to use? Is, is it experimentally? You just try and see what... Basically, what basically as far as I know, yes. I'm, I'm not a wavelet expert, actually. Uh, I'm not a ex great expert on wavelets, so... If I say to, to the best of my knowledge, it's not that much, <laughs> and, but uh, yeah, that's it. That it's it's incredibly hard to find somebody who knows anything about wavelets these times. Yeah, okay. <laughs> because w when I wanted to to do something with wavelets in university, I tried and I searched, and I could find nobody at the, at the University of Pisa, for example, that knew anything about wavelets. And actually, my professor, when I asked her if I could do a project instead of doing the standard exam, and uh, she, she was really happy. Oh, yeah, wavelets. I know absolutely nothing about wavelets. Do it so that you can explain wavelets to us afterwards. That was she, what, she, what, what she said, and she teaches um, computational maths. OK. So yeah. <laughs> yes? When do you use Fourier transfer, wave transfer, or any other transformation? Is there where are the, uh, the advantages and disadvantages? Well, uh, the point is that of, of the Fourier transform is that you, you, you get to see the, uh, the, the signal in the frequency domain, so you can do things like filtering or uh, compression that is discarding stuff and so on. Uh, sometimes you want to know when something happens. For example, if you have an audio file or even a, um, a picture, say, let's say a picture, it's, it's basically the same thing, um, uh, you might have sharp edges at some point. And if you are doing a Fourier transform, and which is necessarily windowed, otherwise it's impossible to, 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 to treat, then, then if your window, if your Like this, and your window is this, and your window is this one. 
you, you weird things happen. No. Um, whereas with the weightlet transform, you get it represented better because um, you have the scaling function, for example, let's take car, and then you have these, and then you have uh, So in this case, you would be able to represent this sharp step way better with the weapons than with the Fourier transform. But in how it would really is used for some kind of purpose support from communication? Not, not available. That's just an example <laughs> to show this thing. But um, as I said, I had I'm not really that big big uh, expert, it's just that I, I, I lost some months of my life researching this stuff and I thought that perhaps uh, it could be useful for other people as well. <laughs> because I, I remember how hard it was for me to find somebody, so I thought, why not? <laughs> so, this is, uh, this is, so that's basically the, the, the big advantage with wavelets, is that, is, it, it, this is the, the whole point, that um, you have better localization in the time. So if you have a window like this, you, you get a better approximation of, uh, of, it. Oh, of, of, well, of course, if you are transforming, you are of course have a perfect representation, but then if you are compressing, you are throwing stuff away, and then in that case, the, the Fourier transform will do, we screw up. Great thing, as you know. Yes? So you're basically uh, pattern matching the frequency domain to determine at which time a certain frequency can happen, right? You, I guess you can say something like that. Okay. But you're not pattern matching frequency frequencies, but this wavelet functions, basically. Okay. Uh, the Fourier transform is exactly the same thing, but with a sine and cosine. Or cosine, just cosine, because you, you have real signals and stuff. But so instead of mm, correlating, basically, basically the, the whole thing is correlating the signal with a sine or a cosine. Is the point is correlating with wavelets? Wavelet, the wavelet and the translation of stretched wavelets. And that's that's the mean, basically. That here is where, where the wavelets mean. Okay, any more questions, curiosities, or anything? You, you can ask anything, I, I have <laughs> the Bible to, to look up stuff uh, if, if it's needed or whatever. No? Okay, well, thank you for coming. And